everyone. Uh, welcome back to the Sterling Engine Locomotive Project. Uh, this is a quick update of what I've been up to um, over the last week. So I'm still in the design stage of this project. Um, I'm just trying to get all my ideas together. I'll show you what I've been up to on the computer at the moment. Right, so this is um, where the design concept is at the moment on the computer. Um, so this is the version one um, design concept. Um, You'll notice on this one that I've put the flywheel really high up. Um, this is to get the correct angles um, uh, for the phase angles between the hot cold, uh, the hot side and the, the cold side. Um, the problem is if I put it lower, I could make it lower, but then what I was finding was the linkages went straight across the firebox door. Um, so obviously that wouldn't really work out too well. Um, so what I've done is I've gone to a a bell crank type mechanism. Now this is a fairly common mechanism within the Sterling engine world. Um, so if you see here, uh, so it's not showing the flywheel here, but this is a crankshaft, which the flywheel will be on. Be on. Uh, there will actually be a crankshaft here. I haven't got that illustrated here at the moment. Um, I'm just uh, in the drafting stage really. Um, so this, this will be linked to this, uh, this lever here, which pushes this pancake uh, piston here. And on the other side, it goes through this bell crank. So this uh, this bell crank will throw, throw off this piston by 110 degrees, which is uh, the phase angle that I'm aiming for on this particular engine. Um, so just a few other details of the design. Uh, I've got a brake here on the wheel. This is gonna be pushed upon by this uh, threaded bar here with a, a wheel on top. Um, to put the brake on and take it off. Uh, this will be sprung loaded so the brake will come off again. So this the cold tubes are uh, we're going through this side from uh, from the hot side to the cold side. Uh, the air intake is via this flap here, this adjustable flap. So the idea is that the air gets sucked through through the cold side to keep the cold side cold um, down through here um, to the bottom of the fire. And then the uh, the draft from the fire should hopefully uh, pull the air through that, and then uh, then uh, combust that already pre warmed air um, to create a, hopefully a hotter flame. I'm hoping there'll be enough draft to keep the cold side cold, um, but I don't really know if I'm honest. So um, I think the best thing to do is uh, just try and see what happens. Worst case scenario, uh, we can always add a fan here. Um, and then I'll, I'll put some vent holes here so we're not um, blowing uh, too much air through the fire, basically. Uh, so here's an end-on end on view. Uh, you can see all the, the tubes. So this is flattened um, a flattened tube to create a nice small air gap um, to hopefully get the maximum heat transfer from the flue gases passing outside of the tubes to the, um, the working fluid, which is air in this case. Uh, within the tubes. Um, so that's pretty much where I am with that at the moment. That's as far as I got. Um, I put a cap on top of the chimney as well. Um, this engine may get left outside a few times in the rain, so I don't want any water going down the chimney. Uh, yeah, so uh, that's where the, the design is at the moment. You'll see my to-do list here. This is my to-do list of all the things um, as I'm going through it. I like to try and write things down or so I just forget what I'm meant to be doing. Um, so I've got the clutch clutch and tensioner. That still needs to be done. Um, I might, um, I was just talking to my dad the other day about this. What we might try and do is actually run it without a clutch and have a direct belt drive. Uh, and then we can use a vent valve to 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 um to stop and slow down the engine. Um, I'll design it so it can have a clutch fitted if needed, uh, like a, a belt slipping clutch. Uh, but we're going to try it without the start with. Um, and I also still need to work out the gear position, gearbox position. Um, so this is the gearbox. Uh, I think I was just remote myself. Yeah, so I was going to mount it in in this orientation. I believe I think it was yeah that way. So I'm a, so as far as mounting, I'm I'm not going to uh, I'm not going to um, draw the gearbox within CAD. I'm only interested in in the in the key points. Um, so that it be the mounting points. I'm going to use the two holes at the bottom there. Um, and I'm interested where that shaft is, um, and where the sprocket is, um, and also the end on uh, where they are in relation to each other. 
um, so I can get the correct distances um, for the uh, the chain line and the belt line as well. Okay then, so that's the progress so far. Um, I'm hoping over the next week that um, I should get to the point, um, as long as nothing comes up um, that uh, blatantly won't work, um, I'm hoping to get to the point of actually getting some templates together um, and hopefully um, think about sending them off to the laser cutter companies to actually get all the, all the bits cut out. Um, but I'll see. Um, in the meantime, if anybody's got any great ideas or, um, or any um, problems that they can see in the design, then, um, then I am always. Um, now is the stage to combat some of those issues because it can be easily solved at the moment um, just by uh, changing a few things on the computer. But um, once I've committed to cut all the pieces out, it's, uh, it's a bit harder to rectify uh, any issues. Right, I'll see you till next time and um, have a good Christmas and uh, see you next time. Bye.